Patrick Swayze, and you can see me. I'm Matt Damon. Hi, Al Pacino. Uh, would you watch my entertainment and sports today? Thank you. That's great. That's great. Oh, watching entertainment and sports today. Stay here. Right here. Oh, yeah, baby. Stay tuned and watch her on entertainment and sports today. Right. And I can't wait for more of both entertainment and sports today. <laughs> Thank you very on much. TV. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Uh, this is Kevin Costner and uh, be sure and uh, watch me on entertainment and sports today. If you would, please. <laughs> okay, stay tuned for entertainment and sports today. Thank you, beautiful. Angelina Jolie stars in Disney's Maleficent. And now we take you to the world movie premiere at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. Well, well. It's everything. There's no film without the fans and everybody's support. So cool. There are fans like I'm fans of Maleficent. I'm really happy that so many people are here and supportive of it. I'm such a fan of Sleeping Beauty, I always was. So for me, I'm like having a weird fan moment too. The whole world that Rob Stromberg has created visually, so it's got a very unique, magical world that's, that's being created. I sort of dream of a Hollywood premiere and then I'll, you know, really? It's like you pinch me. Three years in the making, it's a big, big, big visual feast. And uh, we spent a lot of time and effort over in London and back here with the special effects geniuses making it so it's really gratifying to see all these fans waiting. It's always an amazing thing when you're a writer. It's not just what was in your head, it's better. You have some incredible actors playing the part. Angie has that amazing range where she's able to take people on that journey. I was very, very nervous to get it right, but, uh, but oh, it was so fun to wear the horns. I think the christening is where everybody's going to have the most fun. It's when she gets to kind of do her thing the most. I think it'll make everyone smile, I hope. I haven't seen it yet. I've got my 3D specs on already. I'm so excited. It's the first time all my six kids are, are at a premiere. Yeah, it's really exciting. And everybody was heading towards LA Live for the Los Angeles Film Festival. Actors, actresses, producers and directors with parties every day at the Filmmakers Lounge and at the Variety Arts Club. Over 200 movies to choose from and 35 world premieres at the LA Film Festival. And they also had coffee talk. We got to speak to and learn from directors, producers, writers and actors. They also had Q&A after most of the movies. We got to learn from these actors and talk to them about anything you want. Actors like Robert Patrick and Hal Holbrook, who played Mark Twain in a great one-man show called Holbrook Twain, an American Odyssey. It was a great experience, even for actors and singer Pat Gray. And they had the world premiere for Earth to Echo, a movie very similar to E.T. Here's some scenes for the red carpet, and the movie starred as Alex, Tito Hal, and the other actors were as Munch, Reese Hartwig, and as Emma, Ella, Lena, Wallastat, here in this picture. And they got to meet Bradley Cooper in the after party. You all remember him from the Hangover series. And here he is talking to all three of the actors and posing for pictures. And I was lucky enough to say hello to him myself before he left. Actor Bradley Cooper. Great movie, Earth to Echo. And another great movie that we can recommend is Trouble Dolls. Make sure you see it. It stars Will Forte and actress Megan Mullally. Stay tuned, see that theater near you. And Cutbank has an all-star cast, including Teresa Palmer and Oliver Platt, also starring Bruce Dern, John Malkovich, and Billy Bob Thornton. And actress Morgan McClellan gets an exorcism in a very scary movie called Inner Demons, also starring Laura Vosburgh. 
The Liberator is an Oscar-quality movie starring Edgar Ramirez as Simon Bolivar and also starring Eric Wilpret. And a very funny comedy is Dear White People starring Brandon Bell, Tessa Thompson, and Kyle Gallner. And a great action and serious drama, The Road Within, starred Zoe Kravitz, also starred Robert Sheehan and was directed very well by Gren Wells. In the audience was actresses Kirsten Ritter, Jolie Fisher, and singer Moby. At the closing night of the LA Film Festival was the world movie premiere of Jersey Boys, the true story of Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons getting their start in New Jersey, directed by Clint Eastwood, a Warner Brothers picture. Starring Michael Lamenda as Nick Massey, one of the original Jersey Boys, and Joey Russo, who played the Joe Pesci character. And coming up next are some scenes from the movie and a few words from some of the cast and director. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, international recording stars, the Four Seasons! I not only like this music, but I also like the story, sort of delinquents that make it big. Jersey Boys is the quintessential rags to riches story. These are average guys with superhuman skills who became superstars. Oh, what a night! Late December, back in 63. At the very beginning, nobody knew quite why somebody had picked Frankie Valley and Four Seasons to do a show on. You're expecting just another bubblegum musical. Well, they were far from that. When you go back into it, you see that they came up as juvenile delinquents. <laughs> they were guys from Newark, New Jersey. Hey! The projects, working class Italian guys, in and out of jail. Friends like that, you should change your name to Sinatra. I'm gonna be as big as Sinatra. And music came and pulled them out and gave them something to really strive for. Sherry. Nick Massey was the arranger. Bob Gaudio became their songwriter. Tommy DeVito was the brawn, and Frankie Valli was the voice. Frankie does have not only a great voice, but very unusual. Sherry, can you come out tonight? After 30 seconds, I know I need to write for this voice. Before Bob Gaudio came into the picture, the music was pretty much cover songs. Girls. Bob Gaudio, the music he's written, the songs he's written, he's incredible. Nick Massey, he was the guy who never studied arranging or anything, he just kind of heard it. So he was responsible, some say, for that iconic Four season sound. Tommy DeVito is someone who has a lot of courage, but he's also had a lot of problems. You think it's easy dealing with the club owners, the managers, the record companies? It wasn't always the cleanest path to success. These guys were involved with the Mafia. Chip DiCarlo, he was kind of a mob boss, I guess. But he helped Frankie Valli when he was young and continued to be part of his life. I've been working my way back to you, babe. A lot of people don't even realize all of the songs that are Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. So one of the first times I saw the show, I was like, oh my God, and this song and that song. It was just like, again, you get chills like the, throughout the whole show. I knew it was a tremendous hit, and uh, I thought it would be a nice, uh, nice challenge. Come ahead. What's been so great about the way Clint and his team have produced the movie is bringing in all these people who did the show on stage who really know it. He values the truth that these actors are bringing to the roles because they help to create these roles. How great to watch a legendary Hollywood director turn into an enraptured audience member in front of you. You know, that's fantastic. Everybody loves working for him. It's this environment of Focused, fun. Oh, well, it was great fun. You'd go home humming a different song every day. Everybody's just 100% on their game, ready to act, sing, and maybe even dance. 
Jersey Boys is for everybody. A lot of people say it's the musical that guys drag their girlfriends to. It's something in its own entity. And it's more like a backstage pass to what was going on when these guys were making it as big as they were. I love you, baby. Clint Eastwood movies will always have a lot of depth. And I think he's going to bring that essence of the 50s and 60s. You're going to feel like you really are there. Who loves you, pretty baby? It's about real people. It's about stuff that really happened. Families and brotherhoods breaking up and the rise and fall of this band. <laughs> Their blue collar rise to fame is something that speaks to fraternity, to brotherhood, the family, and the neighborhood. Humble beginnings, struggle to survive, struggle to make good. These guys who were really headed in the wrong direction kind of took that from the streets Jersey energy into the recording studio and became really a phenomenon.